Hey guys, welcome back. Or if it's your first time to the channel, just plain old welcome. So today we want to go over something we've been asked about numerous times, and that is we want to do a tour of the outside of our current fifth wheel. Now our current fifth wheel is a 2020 New Horizons 40 foot Majestic. So uh, let's head around front and we'll do a quick walkthrough. All right, so to begin with, I didn't get a chance to clean the coach. So if it looks dirty anywhere, just ignore it. Or if you can't ignore it, just give me a thumbs down, I guess. But every time I've tried to clean this coach up the last few times to do this video, we've had a big dust storm come through or across the wall behind us, the farmer decides to work in his cotton field or we get some rain. So it is what it is. So like I said, what you're looking at is a 2020 New Horizon 40 foot Majestic with a four color full body paint scheme that's called Champagne. And it also has a uh, double clear coat. Now, if you might notice on the slide walls as we walk around, the uh, walls to the slide rooms are also color matched. That's an option when you uh, work with New Horizon. So the first thing I also point out that because this is a 2020 model, the front cap is different from the previous years. This is the first year that they have some contours and the LED lighting on the cap. Previous years were all a flat cap, which I like the front cap of the older models, but they decided it was time for a change. So now let's head on up toward the front. Now, if you'll notice, we have a protective rock guard paint package on the front. So that makes it real nice. No rock chips on paint. We have a 32,000 pound pin box. These two things up here you see is a front and rear. Go along with our Voyager camera system. So on both sides of the coach, we have a camera like that on both sides at the front and we have a camera at the rear above the rear window that leads to these two plug-ins right here. I plug into those once we hook up the truck. Those cords plug into the truck. And I have a color monitor system that uh, sits inside the cab. And I can uh, switch back and forth from either side to rear or all at one time or whatever I want to do. So it's a real nice system. Very handy. Okay, now we pop in here. If you'll notice this cargo door, now in a lot of fifth wheels, actually most fifth wheels, if you opt for a generator, your generator will be mounted in this area. The New Horizon mounts their generator behind the axles. So it frees all this space up for cargo. And if you'll also notice, there are no extra doors up front where most manufacturers will put batteries. New Horizon mounts or batteries under the cargo floor. Now this works with AGM batteries mainly because if you want to do lithium they're a little more picky as far as uh, staying in warm weather so they they rig something else up in the coach and you wouldn't have this uh, this bay here but for us we use AGM batteries so this works out pretty well. Now we have eight batteries here and that gives us just under 900 amp hours so really 450 amp hours of usable time and over here is one of our bigfoot jacks and another bigfoot jack over here new horizon uh, does four bigfoot jacks on their system and they get away with doing four because uh, they use a 12 inch I-beam frame with a six inch steel tube attached to it that they build in house. So it's not a Lippert frame. This is built in house. Let me close this door down. Almost all cargo doors on the New Horizon have slam latches. Very nice system. 
All right, so here's one of our electronic bays. There's our Magnum 3012 hybrid inverter charger, 3000 watts. There you'll see our breakers for our solar system on the roof. We have 3000 watts of solar up on the roof. And there you'll see some breakers for the generator, our slides, and our Bigfoot system. And off the right of that is actually a light switch for the light for this bay. And a Bigfoot switch that turns off the power to our Bigfoot leveling system. And of course the main cutoff switches. Now if we come around the corner, here is our controller for a Bigfoot system. I have the power turned off right now, but you'll see I put some cheat sheets up here, or little notepads, or little notes. Uh, D, F, P, and R for drivers, passenger, front, and rear. So I don't get mixed up when I'm running the jacks manually. Now this system does have an auto level, but I hardly ever use the auto level. It never, never fails that if I use auto level, I have to go back through and touch it one or two times, one direction or the other to make it 100% level, so I just do it manually all the time. Now here's some weight information on our coach. You'll see that our coach weighed dry, 21,840 pounds. We can, uh, it's rated up to 27,000 pounds. So if we filled up our fresh water tank and our propane, that would still leave us with 4,150 pounds of cargo capacity, which is very good. I can't count the times we've looked at other manufacturers and you look at the cargo capacity you can get and they show maybe you have 2,000 pounds, for example. And that's without a generator or without a washer and dryer. Now, this weight for our rig is with the generator and the washer and dryer. So we have 4,150 pounds. If we filled our water tanks up <laughs> and our propane was full, we still have a huge amount of cargo space. All right, so let's turn around here and go into our cargo bays. So here we have a our water water softener. This is pre-plumbed in. New Horizon was using a different brand when we first looked at them, but when I tried to contact that manufacturer, I had very poor customer service. So I did some research. I came across this system. I opted to buy this system and have New Horizons install it. And as it turns out, now you, New Horizon uses this water softener system in all the coaches when people want to have a water softener. Turn the corner. This is the plumbed in water filter. Now New Horizons will plumb in whatever you want to. They'll do one filter like this, two, three, four filters, reverse osmosis, whatever you want to do they'll do for you. But because we run our water through a filter outside before it ever enters the coach, and then we run our water through this filter, the softener, and then all of our drinking water goes through a Berkey, which you may have seen that video, but if not, we have a video on our website about our Berkey water filter. Uh, we felt this single filter was adequate for us. That panel you see over here actually leads to the holding tanks, our gray and black valve components are back there if we ever need to work on them, and a few other oddball things. And there you see the batteries we talked about. I'm just going to flip this up and show you what it looks like. So that closes down. Look at that floor space. I can take a lawn chair. I've done this. I've taken a lawn chair, sat it inside there, sat straight up in the lawn chair, held my arms out, not touch a thing. Now, you know, a lot of manufacturers boast about cargo space. But uh, take a look at yours. Does it compare? This is fantastic. So then behind here, you will see our Magnum Auto Gen Start. You'll see our 
transfer switch, and that's our progressive management EMS system. Now, our solar controller, I'm going to show you that again later, is around the side there, if you can see that white box. We, uh, that's where our solar controller is mounted. It's a PT100 Magnum. So all the wires are pretty well harnessed in there. I wouldn't mind if they actually put those in some sort of a raceway, but uh, compared to a lot of manufacturers, this isn't all that bad. You'll see that there is two heat vents back here, one in the ceiling, and one right back there behind our brine tank. Now, we won't go over it. We won't talk about the water softener much in this video. I will do a separate video on this, so, <coughs> excuse me. Maybe you want to hit that subscribe button and come back and check that out. We'll talk about the solar system, our batteries, and we'll do a separate video on the water softener as well. Slam latches. Very nice. So, as I mentioned, we have the full body paint. Gives you a chance to take a look at that. Again, ignore any dirt. We didn't need to get a chance to clean this thing up. All right, so this is our wet bay. You'll see our manifold right here. And uh, you'll see our hot and cold side. And every line going into the coach, we can turn off right here. So if we have one fixture inside the coach that needs to be worked on, we can turn that line off by itself. We have a sea level tank monitoring system. Here's our cables in for satellite and whatnot. Outdoor shower, which we never use. We have flush valves for the gray and black tank. Here are our pull level levers to drain our gray, black, and fresh tank. And our Anderson valve system. The only thing I'll say, when we had our motor home, we could actually be on city water. And if we wanted to push a button inside to turn on, to turn on our water pump, we could do that and still get water out of our tank. But in this system, we have to come out and make sure we're on dry camping in order for our pump to take water out of our tank. So I'm not sure why they can't make a change there, but maybe someday they'll figure that out. Another thing I'm not overly crazy about is the floor in the wet bay. If you'll notice the way that set up where our fresh water hose goes out, that creates a lip around there. Now it's a wet bay. When you flush your tanks or do whatever, you're gonna get water inside that compartment. It's just gonna happen. And the water pools around that. That needs to be flipped around to the underneath side or something so water can run out. And I need to make that change myself, I think. Um, we do have a electric cord reel. So the cord reel is back up behind here. If it ever goes back, goes bad, I have to punch this out, go in through that bay, that cargo door in the uh, cargo area I showed you and try and get to that thing. But I'm not looking forward to that if it ever happens. And a light switch. And the cord reel switches up there. Then we have another cargo bay here. And that's a nice useful bay for our septic hoses. And you'll see that there is a grate type floor in the bottom. So if you ever have any leakage or water in there at all, it just goes out to the ground. Doesn't uh, build up inside your cargo bay. And these two here, we have two furnaces. So we have, uh, and both furnaces are 42,000 BTU. This one here controls the bedroom, bathroom, and the heated cargo bay, and where our holding tanks are. And this furnace is for our kitchen and living room area. So, speaking of tanks, uh, we have a 100 gallon fresh tank, 80 gallon gray tank, and a 50 gallon black tank. 
and all of those are in an insulated area in the belly. I think I neglected to show our propane tank up here. This is one of two 40 pound propane tanks. What's, uh, what New Horizon does nice is they put one propane tank on both sides of the coach. So many manufacturers do propane tanks in one bay so if your back tank goes empty, you have to deal with both tanks at one time, and it's a booger sometimes to get back there and deal with it. But with having a tank on each side, makes it pretty simple. And they have a auto switchover. So you'll see it up there with the green. When, uh, when the other tank goes dry, it'll turn red, and they will automatically switch to the other tank. And then you switch this lever on top of this, and it'll go green again and shows what your current tank is doing. So, pretty nice system. You'll notice on the bottom there we have a gate valve. So when we bought this coach, the hookup was underneath. I had to get on my hands and knees every time to hook up the sewer hose. Just drove me crazy. And then of course you would come in our wet bay and pull the black or gray tank lever to drain. So I didn't want to get on my hands and knees in the campground where odds were somebody at some time had some type of spillage. So I added on a little extra pipe and put that second gate valve, which to be honest with you, uh, how many of you have gone out, hooked up your, your uh, sewer hose, took your cap off, I had a little surprise in there that, uh, that helped stop that. So this door up here goes behind our refrigerator. This door here goes to our 16 gallon suburban water heater. That is an upgrade. Uh, the one they put in normally is smaller we wanted to go with a 16 gallon, it is propane and electric, of course. So all the way around the coach, all the windows are dual pane and tinted and frameless. So nice windows. So as far as our wheels and tires and axles, so what you're looking at, these are 17 and a half inch Goodyear G11 wheels and tires and axles. So what you're looking at, these are 17 and a half H rated tires. They're all on aluminum wheels. Even the spare is on aluminum wheel. And they have 5 8 inch studs. Now all their newer coaches, all their 2021 models and newer, uh, they, they went to a 9 16 stud on all of the wheels. So that's kind of a nice upgrade. And we run TST tire air pressure monitoring system. We've been using that same system since we hit the road eight years ago. Been very reliable. Now as far as the suspension goes, we have three more ride, 8,000 pound axles, all independent suspension, and we opted for the Kodiak electric over hydraulic disc brakes, and we went with the Kodiak greasable bearings. You can do never lube bearings if you choose. We've heard of quite a few horror stories about the never lube bearings. Not that they're a bad thing and you may never have any issues with them, but I think we decided I wanted to do the greasable bearings and I'll just deal with those once a year. Now, <clears throat> these two doors here we have an electric, an electric cord reel. So <laughs> I hate this system, but they've changed this. So what we have to do is open up the door to the right. That's where our cord goes up in to our reel. The door to the left opens up to the top. You have to hold that with your left hand, hold the door to the right open, and then push the button in the left door, and that makes a cord go in. So you're kind of fighting two things. It's just, it's just kind of a hassle. So we had a meeting with New Horizon a while back, a bunch of owners, and uh, 
they have now changed this system. I have yet to see it, but I've been told it's changed, that that's going to be one door, very similar to what we have on the other side of the coach I'll show you in a minute. That's going to be one door with a cord reel and the switch, and there'll be some cargo space around that. So it uh, should be a much better system. We opted to have a 300 pound uh, receiver put in the back of the coach. The only thing we use it for are bicycles. So kind of overkill for that, but if we ever wanted to tow something back here, you really could. We also opted to have mud flaps put on. You can see that back there and you can see one of the big foot leveling jacks right there also. We decided to have a awning put over our rear window. This window is to our living room, living room area. So if the sun's beating in on the back of the coach, that uh, awning is very nice to have. Above the awning, if you can see it up there, is our rear camera. And again, all the lights on this coach are all LED. The light up there in the corner, uh, there's a light like that in all four corners and over by above the wet bay and that's a security security light so we can push a light a button above our bed or in the living room kitchen area and all the lights go on around the coach and uh, it brights it, it lights it up for a long ways So we also opted to have slide toppers put on all the slides. That's kind of personal preference. Hello hummingbird, see the hummingbird? Yeah, they like the hummingbird feeder we keep down in the back window. Not supplied by New Horizons. And you'll see another security light up there in the corner. So this cargo bay is interesting. This is not something they typically do. So. Typically, that's just one solid wall there. And there's a hole that comes out right here that you stick a wrench in. So you can turn that apparatus right there, which lowers the spare tire. So as I was crawling around some other units, I saw this cavernous area behind this skirting, and I decided to have them put in this extra cargo bay. All this is is a bay just like the one where we have our sewer hoses except they put a solid floor in the bottom. And I, I put all my cleaning supplies. So all the cleaning supplies, um, lubricants, hydraulic fluid, brake fluid, you name it, that's where we stow it. And it's very, very handy. So I mentioned the generator. The generator is right back there underneath. Hopefully you can see that. See that green piece back there? That's our generator. Now our generator is a 6,500 watt propane generator. Now I admit that you have to get on your hands and knees and crawl back there to service it, but I don't typically service it. We have somebody else service it, so they get to deal with it. But if I have to change a tire, I have to crawl underneath there anyway. And uh, it's not that bad. I lay a tarp down, put on some knee pads. And once you get down there, you can't see it in this video, but uh, you can get up on your knees and sit straight up, no problem at all. And there you'll see another one of our Bigfoot jacks and one of the mud flaps. You'll notice we opted to have two carefree awnings, they're electric awnings, put on. Gives us a quite a bit of shade. Once again, frameless dual pane tinted windows. We did a 40 inch TV outside here with a sound bar. The TV is on a swing arm, so we pull a chain, pull it out, it helps keep the sun 
off of the screen. Again, slam latches on all the doors. So we have the more ride step above entry step system. A love and hate relationship, very sturdy. So in situations like this, when you walk in and out, very, very sturdy step system. Um, what we don't like is number one, it folds up inside the door. So if you travel on rainy days, you have to deal with that. And when you're leveling, you have to make sure you have clearance between the top step and the door uh, otherwise you can't get the door shut but you know what we won't go over that now i'm going to do a video about that step system and show it in operation show some of the challenges and uh, that'll be a separate video we also went with the keyless rv lock system for our door Again, some people don't like them. We've had it for almost two years with zero issues. So we, we love it. This cargo bay you see down here is for our hydraulic systems. So this is for our brakes. This here is for our slides. And there's the reservoir for the hydraulic fluid for the slide system. So what's nice about this is if we did happen to have a hydraulic leak, at least in this immediate area, all the hydraulic fluid would go inside this cargo bay. We've seen some manufacturers where if you had a leak, it would go and destroy some of your personal belongings. So not a good, not a good thing. And, and you can see once again how cavernous this is. And that's the front where we started. Now I mentioned I would show this to you. You see that PT100 solar controller right there? It has to be mounted vertical like that. It can't be mounted sideways. So that was about the best place where that could be mounted. And again, there's the water softener, the access panel to the working components. And this is the uh, part of the Firefly system. And we'll talk about the Firefly system when we go inside the coach and do a tour there. All right, so I decided to quick like jump underneath the coach and show you the generator. Now, I'm 60 plus years old, so I don't know if quick like was the proper terminology, but I'm under here. So here you see the generator. This cover comes off for a... Uh, so you can service it. I'm up on my knees. I'm not sitting straight up, but you can see I have plenty of room to work. Here's a spare tire. So that system I showed you in that cargo bay cranks this down to get her spare tire. One thing I forgot to mention was, see those wheels back there? Those are for, for uh, skidding along pavement or whatever. Those are designed to, one on both sides, those are designed to support the entire weight of this coach if we need to. And there's the power cord reel right back here. Okay, I made it back out from underneath the coach. So that's it for this video. We won't do the tour of the inside on this video because this is dragging on way too long. Hopefully you found it interesting, but maybe you'll hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and come back and check our video for the interior tour and our future videos. I hope to do videos on uh, our water softener, the solar system, more bike rides and hiking trails, eating establishments, you name it, we're going to go over it. So. Uh, that's it. See you in the next video.